Now, the last thing that I want to touch on is you did mention here about the pentatonic scale. Um, the the goal of scales is you need to learn um, you need to learn the scales, but you don't need to practice the scales. Uh, the only time you practiced the alphabet was when you were a kid, and then once you learned the alphabet. I don't see any adults going back going A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K. Okay, cool. I know my I know how to do my alphabet. All right, cool. Now I can start going. I can I can write this email. Like, do any of you practice the alphabet before you go to write an email, write an essay, do anything that you do in your day-to-day -day life, write a text? Do any of you practice that? I just need to make sure I rule out that 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 there's not people in, in the room that that practice their ABCs before they do their work for the day. But that is what someone who practices their scales is doing. If you're someone who goes in and you're like, hey, I want to be a better communicator at guitar, so for the next 15 minutes to half an hour, I'm going to practice my scale exercises, then you are now wasting time. If you need to learn a scale and learn how it has context with the song that you're playing, that's a different story. Practice that. Practice learning how it works. But don't practice scales for the sake of practicing scales. You being like one second faster to figure out where something is is not going to make you better. You having better musical context and playing lots of music is going to make you better. So for instance, we're playing an E minor pentatonic scale. This is what I would encourage you to practice um, in this song. So you know, from what I'm seeing in your playing, you must know where an E minor pentatonic is, which is. You got that, right? Now, what I would do is I'd be like, okay, well, when I hear an E minor pentatonic, like when I go to play the E minor chord in this song, I know that this note Those notes there, they're all the notes that are working on the E minor chord. So. So when I play the E minor chord, I know that those all work that way. So you can see when I hear an E minor chord and I play the E minor pen, those notes in the E minor pentatonic, I'm getting very, very close to what the right notes over that chord work. Now the next chord is a is a G. So now I've got those are all notes that fit over that. So over here. here. This is a note that we don't hear. It's a five of six, so it has it's right down here. This is a very, very cheeky note. So now I know that if I hit this chord here, I can get a really, really cool. Now I can start articulating these notes in the pentatonic. So I'm, I'm finding the chord tones that fit over the E minor pentatonic. So in E minor, so. And then over the G. And then over the C. That's a natural minor note there. And then this one here over the B7. This is not actually part of the key. It's uh, it's using a secondary dominant chord. So it's a five chord of the six chord. So it's a five chord of E minor. So that's why it has like this really big pull of the T. So it's a really, really cool way to do a minor key uh, five chord. So that is what I call 
learning your scale. Then now you come into the song and then you like you'd spend that like 10, 15, 30 minutes, whatever time it takes you to get connected to those chords and the scale, that's practice. Practicing the scale and going, all right, cool, I did my scale, um, and now I'm gonna go, all right, now I'm gonna do this shape. That does literally nothing, literally nothing. And so that is what I, I that's what I mean. Like you're just practicing ABCs at that point. So I could give you every mode, every scale, blah, blah, blah. None of it would matter if you didn't apply it musically. So now if we jump into the song and I go, Does that make sense how I approach that? That is the, the next level of just learning a pentatonic. So if you learn the pentatonic, you could just go. So if I play the chords. I said, damn, I was gonna do something cool. So you see, I came back to the G, now to the C. Back to the B. Back to the E minor. Back to the C. To the C, now to the B, You see what I mean? Where I'm, I don't know if you can see what I mean, but basically I'm jamming on the minor pentatonic, but then I train when I practice, I'm learning where the chords are fitting over the pentatonic. Then I go back and I improvise and then I just pay more attention. So you don't have to sit at the beginning. You can be like, okay, I'm going to play every chord, like every E minor chord. 
I'm going to play over the E minor. In every G chord, I'm going to play over the G minor, over the G, every C, whatever. So I will show you the first step. So we just went through the whole process of the improvisation part. Now I'm going to show you like, this is how I would apply it as an exercise. So I'd be like, all right, I'm going to play only the chord tones to get a vibe. And then, then I'll show you the next step. So this is the first, like after you've done the practice and you've learned where everything fits over the chord tones and the E minor pentatonic scale or whatever scale you're playing over. E minor. G. Now to the C. And then the B. Back to E minor. Now to my G. Now to the C. So I'd be like, I'm quite confident that I know where these chord tones are at this point. Now, once you do that, you can see it kind of feels a bit robotic because I am intentionally trying to connect to those chord tones. Now, the next step after that is like, okay, forget that shit. Um, start doing your thing. And so then at that point, I would jump in and just start improvising and doing whatever I feel like. And then if I knew that I'm about to hit a five chord, I'm like, oh, well, I know where this is. So I'm just like, if I, if creatively it leans me towards, like if creatively I'm leaning towards hitting a chord tone, I will know where the chord tone is. But otherwise I'll just do what I want. So we go in. You see how I was just vibing and I was just having fun. Gem plays. Uh, never gonna give you up, never gonna let you down, never gonna run around and desert you. Never gonna say goodbye, never gonna tell a lie, never gonna turn around and hurt you. It's so, so bad. Jim, I expect you, this is crazy, but it's my number, so call Jim, maybe. <laughs> anyway, fucking whatever. Sorry. Um, yeah. So that that's what I would say with the improvisation part. So hopefully you guys had fun today on Feedback Friday. Um, it's now starting to get quite hot. Hot in, hot in here in the studio. But hopefully that brings you a lot of value and uh, and and you guys enjoyed that.